Hey there humans, Timothy here, your resident YouTube rope flow coach from England. In today's video, I want to offer five pieces of advice for you on starting your rope flow journey, or if you've been practicing for a little while, there could be some tips in here that could help you too. Let's get started. Tip number one, get a proper rope flow rope. Yes, you might have seen rope flow online and copied along at home with a belt, a towel, Don't forget to bring a, towel. a dog lead, my personal favorite, a resistance band. In the beginning, you can make do for a session or two with a skipping rope or with a cheap piece of DIY rope made yourself at home, but a proper rope flow rope has been selected because it's the right thickness and the right weight to give your body the right feedback for the patterns of rope flow. My second tip would be to focus on the basics. You do not need complicated patterns to enjoy your rope flow practice. My personal definition of basics would be underhand pattern, overhand, drag and roll on both sides, and then something like matador, both underhand and overhand. Those moves alone, there's so much to drill. And then on top of that, the transitions between each pattern, understanding how to go from overhand to into underhand and back, overhand to drag and roll and back, overhand to drag and roll to underhand, and transition between all those positions. And as well as that, you could go even more basic and just do one-arm flows. This is something I really enjoy. Let go of two handles, holding the rope with one hand and just swinging and flowing and letting the rope lead you and practicing turning and pivots. This is all very simple movements, just led by the way of the rope. Those basic patterns with all the transitions that connect them together, the 90 degree and 180 degree turns, along with the one-arm flow, will give you a very well-rounded practice and it'd be hard to get bored and to not continue to progress. There's always something to work on there. A quote I once heard years ago that has stuck with me since is that art needs boundaries. So within those basic patterns and transitions, there's one rule or should I say law that I'd like you to apply to your practice to create boundaries for that well-rounded practice. And that is the cardinal law. Now I want to make a full video explaining cardinal law in much more depth, but for now, let me keep it brief. Imagine, a giant compass on the floor below where we're practicing. Got the cross, right? We, let's call this side north, this side south, east, west. When you start to roll in a practice, choose a direction to be north and choose a pattern that always faces that way. So if we start in underhand to the north, now you can see that the rope is always drawing a line on the ground going from south to north in the underhand pattern. Now, if I want to go into overhand pattern, rather than stop the rope and go overhand, I should continue in the underhand pattern this way and just simply face the other way. And you'll see, oh, now my upper body is doing the overhand pattern, but the rope did not change direction. It's still going from south to north. If I switch back to underhand, see now my upper body is doing underhand pattern, but the rope is doing the exact same thing. So you can see the underhand and overhand are 180 degrees apart. And then drag and roll is done at 90 degrees to that. So we've got drag and roll to the left, which is to the west, and drag and roll to the right is to the east. And so especially in the beginning, I think it's important to understand this to really help set the tone for your practice. If you understand that overhand is always in the opposite direction to underhand, and that drag and rolls are done in between the two. This is important to understand early on, otherwise you can create bad habits. Very often I see people who are self-taught never heard about the cardinal law, and they'll be doing underhand pattern, and then they'll try and force it into drag and roll without turning the 90 degrees. What this does is it forces the weight of the rope to have to shift. The, the magic and the beauty of what the body can learn biomechanically from the rope is that when we honor the direction we first send it in, it's like a propeller. It's swinging in one direction, it should never change that direction. When we honor the cardinal law, and the way that the rope is moving, and we, instead of forcing the patterns to change to our whim, we end up dancing around the rope and we change the body to suit the pattern. What that teaches the body is these places of positional balance and then these transitional pathways in between those positions of balance that are these beautiful biomechanical patterns that the body can download and then utilize in other moments of movement, of dance, of sport expression. So that is why I think the cardinal law if you're not honoring it or you've not understood it, it's something that really should be deeply understood and respected to get the most out of your practice. Tip number four, don't be shy of feedback. 
Now this is one that you might already naturally seek out and know that it's gonna help you improve or you might have an emotional block or resistance to doing this. And there are many ways to get feedback for your practice. One would just be to do it in front of a mirror. Obviously not everyone might have access to that, but if you've got gym access or space at home or a movable mirror, practicing in front of a mirror gets instant feedback so you can adjust yourself on the fly. Another bit of feedback is to film yourself and then watch it after you can watch it and compare it to yourself at another time. Watch it and compare it to someone else you watch on YouTube or a friend that rolls. That way you can do that. Or you can send the video to someone. You could post it on the Wear the Rope app in the Rope Flow group there. So there's ways to get feedback with filming. A better way even would be to get a Rope Flow coach. I know there's probably not many around the world right now, but if you know someone that does Rope Flow that is better than you and can do a pattern that you're working on, well, there's, it's a universal law that someone that can do something that already that you're seeking to do will be able to offer you great feedback on that thing. So seeking out feedback in some way, regardless of, of the emotional ego check that that might bring to you when you realize, as I've done many times, oh, I'm not as fluid or it doesn't look as cool as I thought I looked in my head when I see it back. Yes, that might be challenging, but that is gonna be the fastest way if you can face that the fastest way to improve and rapidly grow in your practice. And in fact, probably the number one tip I would give if you find yourself in a plateau with your practice in order to push through. Tip number five, practice for one minute a day. That was a piece of advice given to me by a good friend of mine, Felix, on how to learn the guitar. Just pick up the guitar for one minute a day and it completely applies to rope flow. Now that is not a maximum cap, that is just a minimum. Just set out, if it's for two weeks or a month, so I'm gonna pick up the rope for one minute a day. If that is all you do, one minute, time up, boom, rope down, underhand down, drag and roll down for one minute and you're done, absolutely fine, move on. But what you, I'm pretty certain you will find that on some of those days, that one minute will quickly turn to five, 10, 20 minutes. For me, it would even turn to 30 or 60 minutes. So just making that gentle promise with yourself, put the rope somewhere, you know, hang it by the door or something where you're gonna see it. Or even if you wanna practice at home to get that one minute in, tie a load of knots in it, make it really short and just when the TV's on or you're chatting to your partner or something, swing it, just get your one minute in. One minute a day is one of the best tips I could offer you for developing and, and building a, a committed practice with the rope flow, which will guarantee improvement at the beginning. In summary then, a proper rope flow rope. You can get one, obviously I sell them at wearetherope.com. You can check out WEC Method or Octomoves as well, other places out there. Focus on the basics. Cannot stress that enough, don't rush through the basics. And understanding and applying the cardinal law as boundaries to those basics. Next, it was seek feedback, whether that's mirror, filming yourself, or a coach. And then finally, was just a practice for one minute a day. If you got something from this video, please give it a like as it helps others to see it too. If you have any video requests on rope flow or other movement matters, please drop me a comment below and let me know. And for ropes, rope flow courses, or to check out the School of Biomechanics, check out wearetherope.com. And perhaps I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.